Welcome back to the Python tutorial series. I'm so glad you're here. This is the 21st video in the series and today we will talk about what modules are. We will first discuss how to import and use built-in modules such as math and random. Then we will walk through how to install other modules such as NumPy by using pip. The timestamps are in the description below. So let's get started. So what exactly is a module? A module contains functions and a lot of built-in modules come with Python, such as math and random. So where exactly is a module located? Modules are inside of a Python folder and some are already there and you may have to import some others. So when you're importing a module, you're actually importing a package. You're basically importing a folder where the module is and that's how you can use it. A list of built-in modules can be found in the Python module index and I'll list that down below. And it lists every single module. A common one is math. And when we click on it online, we can see everything that the math module does. It does things including taking the remainder, square root, logs, powers, and more. So let's use the math module in some code. I created a file called modules.py and to use math I need to import math and I can do that by saying import math. I'll then create a variable called half and set it equal to math.py divided by 2. So this takes the exact pi number which is stored in math and divides it by 2. Then I'll print half. Now when I run this, I will get half a pi, which is 1.57 and then the rest. And there you have it. And you see I did math.py in order to get the function pi. But what I could do, instead of just importing math, I could say from math import star. Now all I have to do here is pi divided by 2. I don't have to do math.py. Now when I run this, I will get the same answer. However, a drawback of the star is that it imports every function from math into this file. And if we imported two different modules that had the same function, this could cause an error because you're not sure where it's pulling the function from. To solve this, we could do from math import pi. So it just imports pi and no other function. And when we run this, it will still work and we will still get the same answer. We can also import multiple functions from math. For example, if we wanted to import sine as well, we could do from math import pi comma sine. So it's importing pi as well as sine. And then we can use this. Let's do sine of pi over 2. Now we can run sine pi over 2. And that will work. And we'll get exactly 1.0. And those are the three different ways of importing functions. Import math. Then you can do math.py. Or from math, import star. And that imports every single function in math. Or from math import the specific function, for example, pi. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could create a function that prints a random integer? Well, one already exists in the random module. So let's import it. From random, import rand int. And this module is a built-in module in Python. I'm going to create a variable x and set that equal to rand int 1 comma 3. So x will equal a random integer from 1 to 3. Could be 1, 2, or 3. And then I'm going to print x. So when I run this program, it's going to print a random number between 1 and 3. And it's going to output 2. I can run this again. I'll get 3. Run this again. Get 3, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1. And just a bunch of random numbers every single time I run this. If I wanted to create a list of random numbers, I could by doing list1 and set that equal to a blank list. 
then I'll create a for loop for i in range 10. So this will go through the loop 10 times. Then I'll do a list one dot append a random integer from one all the way up to three. Then I'll print list one. And now when I run this, it will output a list of 10 numbers between one and three. And I run this and I get three, two, three, two, two, three, three, one, two, three. And I can run this again and again, and it will give me a different list of numbers every single time. So that's how to use a random integer from the random module. Next, we're going to install a module called NumPy that is very useful, but it doesn't come with Python automatically. So we're going to have to install it using pip. You can do pip install numpy, but you may want to check if you have pip first. You can check if you have pip by doing pip dash dash version. Now when you run this, you will get back a version if you have pip installed, and otherwise you don't have pip installed. If you don't have pip installed, you should run this command python 3.9, or if you're using 3.8 or 7, replace that with that number then dash m pip installed upgrade pip. So what this will do, it will install pip. I'll then run this and it will say I already have the latest version of pip. So that's good. Next I'm gonna want to install numpy. I can do pip install numpy, but I have multiple versions of Python on this computer. So to make sure it installs to the right version, I'm gonna do python 3.9 dash m pip install numpy. It will then install by downloading it and then it successfully installed numpy and there we go. And then we'll import numpy as mp. So this just makes it shorter and you can use as. To make sure numpy is imported correctly, we can then hit the play button and we get no errors. That means it's imported correctly. I'm not going to dive into everything that NumPy does, but let's create a matrix with all zeros. I'm going to print np.zeros and then two open and close parentheses and I'll do 2 comma 2 to create a 2 by 2 matrix. Now when I run this, I'll get four zeros that are zero point because floating is default. If we wanted to change the data type from a floating point to an integer, we could do that by doing comma and then d type equals int 32. So it will convert it to integers now. So now when I run this, I will get zero as an integer or zeros and that's how you do that. I'm not gonna dive into data types in NumPy. This tutorial is just how to import something such as NumPy from the web using pip. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow along with this video series by subscribing and hitting the notification bell or by clicking on the next video to expand your knowledge about Python. And as always, I can't wait to see you next time.